hey, and welcome to episode three of Rushed Vibes. I am your host and executive producer, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by my co-host and our producer, David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. I need the music. You'll be all right. I need the music. You'll be all right. We don't have the music anymore. I feel like the music really hyped me. So, um. So I got to do, 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 do in my head. Because I don't we, need to because, hear it. Because it's season two, new set new vibes we uh no longer have the board in between us like we like we used to have so now jess basically has a cold open and then i edit the music in afterward (laughs) so she's whining because she doesn't have music and i guess she can't count eight seconds i can count eight seconds but it's different when you have the beat do, 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 do. Like, How is it different? Because I can hear it. it. It hypes me. I match the I match the music to your words, so it's the music's gonna come off. Of I you. want to feel it. So if I don't hear so it, just I do don't it, feel it. So no, just do it I want to actually hear it with my ears. You have to make the adjustment. I've made the adjustment. I just want to hear it. All right, well, let's stop whining about it. Any music? Oh, any music? Blah, 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 blah. Just do it. Just do it, like Nike says. What are you drinking? My attempt at recreating this cocktail I had in St. Louis, I still haven't quite mastered it. It tastes good. I can't get the color right, so it just looks like I'm drinking murky water. Um, But it is a... Yeah, it does look kind of... Murky. It's like sewer water. (laughs) Sorry, it it does. I'm drinking my uh, Brett Kavanaugh beer. Shout out to uh, was that his beer of preference? No, it's, it's beer. So you know that was his thing. Oh, he, he drank beer. So <clears throat> look nice. Thanks. Look beautiful. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Put a little effort in. Yeah, I know. The uh, whole fit. The little beige shirt mm-hmm. with the with the pants and the. And the Chucks? They got dressed. You look like, you look like you're ready to step out in the Vegas Chucks, or something. These are my forces. Or uh, forces, excuse me. Like you're about to step out in Vegas. About to. Yeah. I just realized that I matched the pillow and the floor. You do match the pillow and was, the floor. It was unintentional, but... You match the uh, the decor of I the do. set. I do. That I put together. Mm-hmm. Because I'm EP. One of the EPs. No one is disputing that you are an ep no but they're disputing whether or not i'm the only ep which because you're not the only which i am EP. i'm the the one true guiding light for this podcast i would say when it comes to really putting in the grind work that ep credit goes to me so what grind work do you do you put in i at the final hour when we have other obligations, I suggest that we record fire episodes and we record fire episodes. Oh. So it sounds like you're referencing Vegas. So I guess you should tell tell everybody. Okay. About the uh, the fire impromptu podcast episode that we recorded last week. I will do an it. An hour before we were supposed to fly to Vegas. I'll do it with way. pride. So we... We're supposed to go to Vegas. We did go to Vegas, but I'll take you back. So it's Thursday. David takes his two designated children to his parents. I take my one designated child to school. Fight through traffic to get her to school. Traffic that we've never experienced before. Take my car to my parents' house so that they can use it. So that my mother can use it while Solace stays with her and my father and 
catch an Uber, get back to the house. Back to the house like ten forty five. What time's the flight? Flight's at two fifty nine. Take off, right? Take off. Yeah. Like going into the air at two fifty nine. Am right? I telling the story? Just, I'm just I'm just verifying. Continue. So get home, pump a couple bottles of milk. You know, we're packed. We're good. So you know, Dave was in the office editing, you know, trying to get something to sync on the TV so I can watch. Wasn't quite working. But I looked at the time and I was like, you know, we could probably, he was debating whether he should drop the episode last week or drop the first episode this week. And I was like, you know what? Why don't we just record another episode? We got time. You know, be quick. Didn't have to be epic. Just, you know, 45 minute episode. So first he kind of like drug his feet and he was like, which added time because had he just like been with it, we wouldn't have added that extra, you know, convincing time. Um, finally came along. So we get in here, set up the cameras, do all the stuff, sit down. And we recorded last week's episode. Finished the episode at one twenty something p.m. Got in the car. Got to the airport at 147, I believe it was, when we pulled onto airport property. We're on airport property, going to park at the long-term lot. And for the first time ever, first time I've ever seen it, they had closed the long-term lot and the daily lot for reservations only. I didn't even know that on, was a thing. Online reservations. Oh, yes. Online reservations. Didn't know you could reserve a parking spot. And even if you did reserve a parking spot, the the line was so far back. They were, they were treating parking spaces like the sneakers app. Like you had to get in there and go online and reserve them quick before you, you, you missed out. So, so we didn't. Didn't get it. We did not. <laughs> didn't get the parking spot. So there was an overflow lot. So we drove to the overflow lot and it was epic epic getting there um get to get a spot you know corral they corral you through all these spots finally get a spot park get on the bus get to the airport david has pre-check i do not have pre-check yet so i was gonna hop into security he was going to check in the bag because the likelihood of him getting through pre-check faster was higher than me waiting to check the bag so he calls me and he's like yeah they shut down receiving bags I mean it was a large bag so it wouldn't have cleared security it had to it had to be checked and it had items that needed to be checked so at that point I was like okay let's see what we can do thinking you know it's a Thursday airport why is the airport so busy I don't know but it's Thursday we'll you know talk someone at the desk they'll be able to reconfigure put us on another flight so book the flight originally through JetBlue for some reason JetBlue gave half the flight to American Airlines. So talking to a lady at American Airlines, and then she was like, you have to go talk to the people at JetBlue. Go over to JetBlue. Um, at this point, it's obvious we're not we're not going to make this flight. Um, so JetBlue people, you know, they're typing, they're calling people, they're doing this, they're trying to figure out, do they have jurisdiction? Does American Airlines have jurisdiction? Who has jurisdiction? Um, eventually, they are able to put us on another flight, that would connect us in Boston, but that would be the next day. So on Friday, we we got moved to a new flight Friday. Okay, you know, David's not stressing. I'm kind of like annoyed with myself. I'm like, dang, I really had to push to have that episode recorded. Like we could be on our way to Vegas right now. Um, but, you know, at in the same breath, it was just like, hey, it is what it is. Like nothing I can do to turn, can turn this situation around. So we end up coming home. David's like, well, I'm going to go to sleep because I've been up for however many hours. So he goes to sleep, I'm sitting on the couch, get a text from David's mom. And it says, we're taking Sonoma to the emergency room. <sighs> so then I'm like, okay. I think I called her, asked her what was going on. She said, you know, Sonoma's been projectile vomiting all day. Um, you know, and then she got really lethargic. She has a little bit of, she feels warm just to be, just to be safe. Okay. Well, we're still in town. So David's probably been sleeping about 20 minutes at this point. So I let him sleep a little bit longer. And then I finally wake him up and I'm like, okay, Sonoma's being taken to the hospital. We're still in town. Let's just go. 
So we drive to Waxhaw. Get to Waxhaw. See Sonoma. Chick is fine. She's like, nah, 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 nah. hey, mommy. Nurses. She's she's chilling. So um, she's going to have to get a job and pay that bill. Because, like, if you're going to go to the emergency room, I need you to be sick for 24 hours. Um, okay. That's fine. So, you know, they take her home. We get in our car. We head back to Charlotte. We go to sleep. No, we watch This Is Us. I really just wanted you to tell people why we missed our flight. Oh, I'm, and <laughs> just I'm telling the whole story. You're telling, you're telling um, the whole story. Okay, well, that's, so why we missed, did, that's why we missed our flight. I don't, I don't want to be rude because you were, you were just kind of going. And I always get accused of inter- always interrupting Jessica. So I wanted Cause you do. to let her go. But uh, you, were, you were telling a bit too much. Oh, okay. I guess so, I'm done. Yeah. So we missed our flight because we recorded what will be last week's episode that you all will see. And we felt like it was really good. So we weren't upset that we missed the flight. Uh, Y'all, hopefully you guys will have let us know by the time this episode drops, how you felt about last week's episode. I got a little out of character uh, talking about a couple of topics that I wasn't really expecting to be as passionate about, but I guess, you know, it was good to get it out. But yeah, we lost a, a whole day for on our uh, on our Vegas trip. But you know, it was uh it was it was a good time still. You know. Uh, my first time, Jessica's first time not pregnant. Our neighbors uh who've lived next door to us for like eight years, who we've never hung out with as, you know, like couples happen to be in Vegas for the for the weekend. So we got to actually hang out for the first time, like twenty two hundred miles away from home when they, I could throw a rock and hit their back door. Yes. Like that's the, lit- I could don't even have to put a lot of effort into it. Like I can just we could toss skip it. it underhand. Like I don't even go to their so, front door when I need to go there. We just go to the back door because it's like right there, right there. So that was fun. Uh, the strip was cool. Uh, Jess and I both lost some money, not too much, but, uh, and then Jessica's cousin and, and friend were, were there along with us. So they all got to do, get to know each other and hang out and hang out. Um, we also went to a strip club. We did go to a strip club. You took me to a strip club. Mm-hmm. That's not how it worked. I mean, that's not, that's not how I it mean, went down. That's in the gist of it. That's, yeah, this is that's how it went down. So, <clears throat> Did I'm, I just get attacked? I'm a married man in America. So, uh, it means I only have eyes for my wife, right? <laughs> you check out butts all the time. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. You know, if you? somebody if somebody happens to walk past my line of vision, I can't I can't help that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, no, no, I do. I'm a I'm a butt guy. But thank you for acknowledging. There's a lot more than butts being revealed of in a strip club and you know it was it was at this was like our our first night there right so jet lag is just like it's like 5 a.m east coast time the, at the point where i'm like heading to the strip club and i'm already sleepwalking and i want you to know i told him he could go back and it's to not the really and it's not really times it's not really my space right like a strip club isn't really my vibe because, again, I'm married. The last strip club I was in, I was probably early mid twenties because that's where we took a, a friend for his bachelor party. But like, I haven't been in a minute. So walk in, you know, a bunch of scattered ass everywhere and Bra- <laughs> Bra- Brazilian butt lifts just left and right. There and were I'm, a lot. I'm just like I'm trying to stay focused. On Jess, and then Jess like would leave me at random points. So I'm just kind of sitting there, like, like DJ Academics, like tapping my mic, all nervous and stuff. It was just too much booty out there. It's just too much. They were kind of mediocre. I was kind of. I mean, yeah, it was mid, but that's not the point. The point is, took me into an, an, an a venue where they objectify women. <sighs> We, you know we're raising daughters. We are. And we support. <laughs> we did 
couldn't support. I didn't support a, anybody there. Our a, friend, a profession. My old, my old co-worker had the connect, and she was like, this is the move tonight. So we were like, okay. Just straight, straight so we went. ass and and just bills flying and, 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 and stro- strobe lights and it was just it was a lot. So I was, uh, we were, Jess was like, "You ready to go?" And I was like, "Yes, I am. I'm, I'm ready to leave this sin house." <laughs> we were literally <laughs> in the city of sin. <laughs> nah, it was cool. Um, you know. I it, will not subject you to that. The the, the 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 strippers were. I mean, no. Hopefully, uh, your your friend. What's her name? I know her name. I can't. I can't. Lenise. Hopefully, she doesn't see this. But yeah, they was kind of mid, and uh, the strippers were. I don't know that she would take her. <laughs> I mean, she might. She might. I mean, she's the one who got us in, and got us a table, even though it wasn't really like VIP or nothing. It was. It was a table. It was, it was kind of bare bones. Because so, there were like twelve of us. <laughs> yeah. The was like so we were we rolled in there deep. I was the only dude. It was the only dude all week. Just. Jessica, her crew, it was and David, the, it was and David in crew. the back. You were not in the back. I was, just, I was just bringing up the rear. So we did that the first. That was the first night, right? Um, and then the next day, Saturday. I don't even know what we did. What did we do Saturday? We kind of walked we, the strip. Went to the oxygen bar. Walked the strip. We had breakfast. Um, went to a cigar, cigar slash. The, oh, the, this is called the rum bar. Mm-hmm. At the Mirage, you know, it's just straight vibes. Like, no lie, like it's it's hot, but it's covered, right? And they got the little the little mist spraying in the air because it's it's the West Coast, so that you don't have to worry about humidity. And we were just kind of we just chilling. Um, Jessica's cousin and her friend uh, decided to go eat somewhere else because they didn't really like the menu. So me and Jess just chilled. I had a cigar, and you know, it was it was lovely. It was very lovely. And Definitely then, check it out. Yeah, and then that night, um, oh, that night, that was the night I passed yeah, out. You slept. I slept, and then they went. For like 16 hours. Yeah. And then we went to St. Friend Lenise, um, got us into Club Drace, which I guess is a very popular club. I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly because I'm. I do a lot of mis. I've, I've learned I, mispronunciations. Uh, I, I'm not good with pronunciation. So get a text. She asked me if I want to see this particular performer. So I see the name. I know the name. So I was like, David, you want to go see Tony Lanez? And he was like, Tory Lanez? And I was like, no, Tony Lanez. And And it, it was in that moment that I realized that I was, I had made up an entire person. Um, Tory Lanez, who in my head is Tory Lanez or Tony Lanez, um, was performing at this club. So and so we were going back and forth. David was asleep. We were trying to figure out if we were going to this club or not. And ultimately, we ended up going. He, I tried to wake him up several times, and he did not wake up. So um, we just we left. Came back to the room at like 3.30. Um, I think me getting into the bed woke him up. He was up for like 20 minutes and I guess he just went right back to sleep. So he got like a good 16 hours of sleep. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was great. And then... Unexpected. But, un- definitely but great, unexpected. But great nonetheless. Unable to be interrupted. Yeah. Um, and then Sunday was... So lovers and friends lovers and friends we went back to rum bar and that's when we we met up with, uh, with, our, with, na- with, with our neighbors so did breakfast at Yardbird. hung out with the neighbors did a little gambling um hit up lovers and friends get back to the, the hotel yeah so we're not i don't think we're doing a really good job of selling vegas uh for anybody who hasn't been um but it was it was a lot of fun uh mainly just because it was our first vacation, um, kid-free, and really, I think, just period, 
since we've been together, which in total is like 10 years. But uh, yeah, it was it was cool. It was hot, you know, but you step in the shade and, and it's bearable. I will say the Lovers and Friends Festival, a little underwhelming for me. Uh, just because one, I'm not really a big venue guy. Like I don't really do a lot of people in in confined spaces. And though it was outside, it was open. There's just there's just like a lot of people. And um, where we were, I guess, because of the tickets that we had, like we were some at least hundred yards, maybe not hundred, maybe like fifty to seventy five yards away from the stage. So we like couldn't really see. So we had to look up on these. On the, on the big projectors or screens or whatever. And I'm like, mm, okay. And it was hot and it was on concrete. It wasn't like it was out in the field or somewhere like, like in, in a grassy, grassy area. Like it was just on concrete. So you add another like five, 10 degrees. You're just cooking, just cooked. So, roasting. so we were there for like maybe 45 minutes. Like we went after the sun went down. We were there maybe 45 minutes and then we were just was like, all right, we can go. <laughs> so then we left and the next morning we drove to uh drove to palm springs so vegas was i, I think over, overall was a success mm-hmm. uh even despite the fact that we missed our flight one kid went to the emergency room before we left one kid went to the emergency room the first day we got there and then uh jess ended up we ended up being in a uh, fender bender and the Uber on the way to the, get the rental car to drive to Palm Springs. And Jess has some 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 uh, effects from that that she's dealing with now. So it was a very topsy-turvy mm-hmm. type of vacation. But it had good nonetheless, moments. nonetheless, it was it was overall, it was, it was very good. And it was good. just nice to be away. And it was, yeah, nice, and it was nice to be on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. For those who know me, I'm very obsessed in love with the West Coast. So... The mountains and everything. It's just it's just beautiful. So it was good to be out there again. But now we're back. Recording uh podcast in twenty two minutes, wow, of uh our Vegas recap. So while um while we were there, um obviously the uh I think I told you right when we were there about the shooting. When it when it happened? Oh yeah, in Buffalo. Yeah, so we were we were in we were in Vegas when the when the Buffalo shooting happened. Uh, at this point, it's <clears throat> it's kind of shocking to say it's kind of like old news at this point, and it, surprisingly, it, it it's not really on a lot of headlines anymore. And this, at, when this episode runs, I guess it'll be a full two weeks later, but. Um, yeah, white supremacists drove over 200 miles to a uh, predominantly black neighborhood and um, murdered 10 people just because they because were because he could because he could and they were and they were there and live streamed it on Twitch and had a like 500 page manifesto that he. Uh, had on discord i believe and that bob had plotted this for a while and actually ended up kept pushing it back and then turns out he was actually he actually visited the store before uh doing this i think he visited back in march it's it's being reported so it was uh, it was one of those things where uh i saw it in my twitter feed and i i was like oh wow this is I think at the time, I think the, the death count was, was eight. I was like, wow, this is crazy. So I sent it to the group chat. And of course, um, they had already, well, like cousin Mark had already seen it because he's, you know, that type of stuff normally uh, hits his, hits his radar pretty quickly. And I could tell that there wasn't a whole lot of people on my timeline talking about it. I was like, man, this thing's about to, it's about to blow up. And then sure enough, it, it did as more people woke up the next day. Um, or as, as news kind of built during the day, and then, and then more people found out that the next morning, uh, just, just tragic, and uh, very, very upsetting to be 
gunned down just going to the grocery. I mean, most of the, I think one person who was killed was 32. Everybody else was like 50 and up. Like people, our parents, your parents age, people, my parents age, just going to the store Mm -hmm. and killed. So it's, um, well, how do you feel about it? How did it hit you? So, in full transparency, we were on vacation. We were away. So, it. I think it, you know, your iPhone will, will give you, like, random news posts. Um, so, I remember seeing it flash. I was doing something on my phone, and I saw the notification. And I did, you know, when your kid has your phone, and they're watching it, and they just kind of, like, swipe it up. So I glanced it and read it, and then I was just, I I immediately just was like, no. I just, I knew, I recognized I didn't have the emotional or mental capacity to handle that right now. And I think it's, it's a privilege, it was a, in that moment, it was a privilege to have the luxury to see Buffalo and see shooting and swipe. Like, I'm, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not ready to absorb this right now. Because in a quick mental index, I'm like, it's not, it's not Charlotte, it's not, you know, New York City, it's not places that I know I have immediate relatives. Um, oh, actually, I lied. I do have a cousin in Buffalo. She's, I guess, she's fine. Um, so, I had the luxury to not have to, you know, deal with it. Um, but it was also, I think, we're so calloused because shootings are sad to say shootings are a dime a dozen like we are this country like we're always getting shot up like like we're there are shots everywhere and not liquor shots just straight someone just shooting it's like a quarterly but it's almost like a requirement to get through a year it's literally some hunger game stuff here so i recognize that that probably wasn't the best way to like to handle it but i just didn't have the mental capacity where I was like, I'm, I'm going to absorb this information at that point. It was still early on when it, when it flashed through. So I didn't know that, you know, it was racially charged or, um, what the premise of, I think to your point at that, at that moment, it was only eight victims. Um, so I was just kind of like, you know what, this news isn't going anywhere. I can, I can dive into it later. Um, and there's a part of me that feels guilty that I took that that feeling, but there's a part. There's also a part of me that's like I just I didn't have it. I didn't I didn't have it to to focus on. Um, so so yeah, that's how I like that's how I found out about it. And I think you later told me that it was you know racially charged, um, and then I was like, what race? Because it could have been Hispanics. It could have been, I, you know, I thought blacks were off the chopping block for a little bit. Guess not. Um, we're right back. Um, not saying that I want anybody on the chopping block, but it was kind of bouncing around. So, you know, it was racially charged. I said, what, what race? And David told me it was black people. I was like, well, of course. So, you know, he was apprehended alive. Congrats to him and the Buffalo Police Department for not finding a need to shoot and kill this armed assailant. Um, Because that just seems to be the thing. If you don't want to be killed by the police, you need to be armed um, and dangerous. But if you are not armed and dangerous, you are more likely to be killed by the police. But um, that's neither here nor there. Um... No, actually, it's here and there. The I take that back. So that that's really you know it unfolded over the when we got to like the lighter part of our trip. Vegas yeah. was kind of like the hype part of our trip. Palm Springs was the more low key part of our our, our vacation. Um, that's when I was able to kind of do a little more digging, watch some watch some news clips, and see all of that. But we are a society that is essentially conditioned to shootings. We're conditioned to bad things happening and having to deal with it so um you just you have to pray it doesn't touch home but i mean at the same time you feel for the people it touched to your point this is a community grocery store 
older people just going in doing their grocery shopping like it's it's just sad that common things that you do is luck of the draw like if i can go to our harris teeter and come home safe that's lucky but who's to say that someone is not plotting and looking at the geographics of our area and saying there's this much of this race so i'm going to go attack this store which could be the one time that you know i didn't do an instacart order or a walmart pickup order and someone went in there with a gun and started shooting that's not how the grocery experience should be that's not how life experiences should be like even you know the festival that's something that we i had to take into account and think like what are some crazy persons on the balcony of some rented out airbnb with a rifle and we are just out here exposed so i mean yeah you pray but you know i'm sure all of those people are in the demographic of the praying grandma like so you just you count your blessings but it's just sad that that's a way of which you have to look at things you just don't know where you're going and is it safe shootings happen every sandy hook dude was mad at his mom went and shot up the school she worked at innocent children so you know is that if you it's tough because if you sit and think about all of the scenarios you could you would never leave the house Never. I mean, there have been people shot at gas stations, people shot at school, people shot at the grocery store, people shot at work. So it's like, maybe I just need to stay home and not go anywhere and just not live. So, I mean, I I think because I know how emotional I can get about this, I try to just not think about it, which I don't know if that's a healthy thing to do. Um but I kind of take that approach that you brought up. Was it last episode or episode before when we were talking about Ukraine and you were just like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> uh, and I'm not saying I don't care about the fact that there was a shooting, the fact that lives were lost. It's more so I can't afford to over care because I will overwork my brain and put myself in a situation where I won't live. And I feel like Corona already took a lot from me. Um, I can't have shootings do the same. Corona. <laughs> so, so yeah. So that's how that's how I feel in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, I was uh, I was reading a tweet today that the the grocery store where the shooting took place is officially a crime scene. So it's closed. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the only grocery mm-hmm. store in that community. So uh, that uh, part of Buffalo is essentially a food desert yep. at this point. So not only are the families of those killed still grieving uh, and mourning, and I imagine will be for for a super future, no longer have access or easy Access. immediate access to to fresh food well i did hear that they do have a shuttle i mean granted that doesn't make shopping easy but they do have a shuttle that they are transporting people from that location to other stores but that also goes into a deeper conversation about food deserts that yeah. you know a whole community is dependent on one grocery store yeah um i i've worked in the convenience store sector and i've heard conversations about food deserts um for years kind of understood it from just a spectator perspective but once i started actually having to work with convenience stores and going in and seeing like that's aldi brand that's you know that's walmart's brand Mm -hmm. and realizing that you know there are places there are communities that legitimately if you don't have a vehicle you're not you're not eating yeah. good food um that west west boulevard in charlotte is a food desert um i've gone into plenty of convenience stores on that street only because i had to work and realizing that 
this is the nearest store that people have. They don't mm-hmm. like if you're not hopping on a bus. Um, and even our friend Jess, she just moved out to West Boulevard, and she's talked about how like there are no near stores. The closest store is off of South Boulevard, and if you're at, we'll say we'll use Solace the School as a reference point. If you're there, the closest grocery store is about a 15 minute drive. That's that's not setting up a community for the success of healthy living and healthy eating. So that in itself is concerning. Um, but yeah, to your point, they there is a whole a whole community of people that have now been inconvenienced that can't just go to the grocery store. And the trauma that comes with that, just, you know, who knows who was going to the grocery store and something stopped them, they got delayed, they got frustrated because they were delayed and that spared their lives. Like you just, there's so many ways of which your, your thought process can go. Um, a split second decision could have saved a life. Uh, but you know, it's unfortunate. I feel for the grieving families. I can't imagine knowing that your mother, father, uncle, aunt, cousin, sister went to the grocery store to buy groceries. The, a, such a simple human task to do that has been done for thousands of years went to do that and did not come home i it's not right it's not okay um but it also makes you wonder what could have prevented this is this something that could have been prevented i don't know that the american society is designed to stop mass killings like this to stop these type of tragedies so it's it's almost like you just have to get a map and put an x on every city that something's happened and anticipate that you know if your city hasn't already had a shooting one will happen there eventually which is sad and disappointing yeah you know how uh, <clears throat> whenever we go out to a movie you always give me the rundown and I always say if something this pop off like we're gonna do this we're gonna do that the exit's here the exit's there uh, now when I go to the grocery store I, I have to do the same thing right like not because I think you know there's gonna be copycats out there trying to trying to out duel uh, this this terrorist that that shot up the the grocery store in Buffalo, but it's just it's just human nature, right? Like if it can happen in one grocery store, you know who's to say it can't happen at another one. Um, yeah, I, I have a lot of uh, I, don't, I don't know if emotions. I don't have a lot of emotions about it, but I just I don't know. It's I don't know the 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 first uh, the the when the news first broke, I was like, oh man, like this is this is this is tragic, like this is terrible. And then as I as I oh, excuse me, as I kept reading more, kept reading and reading and reading, and then you you see that things like dude had the word nigger written on like the end of his gun. Um, and then you oh, read yeah. about the, yeah, you read about the manifesto and then hear that he actually streamed it on Twitch and he met with some of his, I don't know if you call them followers on discord or whatever, uh, prior to going to the store, like met with people and told people like, this is what I'm about to do. Um, and just the lack of, um, I don't know. It was just, he was just very didn't care that he was, you know, I mean, that's obviously he didn't care because that's what he was going to do. And it's just, it's just really infuriating that those people didn't do anything except Mm -hmm. be black or work in a predominantly black neighborhood. And that was reason enough for them to be, for them to, to be gunned down. Um, and I will say I still, Maybe as, and this is just being naive as a first generation 
African American. I don't understand black hate. Like, I don't understand the need to hate a race so much. Like, it just doesn't... I just struggle with that. I, I, I don't have hate in me. I'll get annoyed with some races. Like, don't get me... Like, when we went to this club in Vegas, there was, like, a whole Indian crew, and they were the most annoying in the entire club. Everybody was done with them. But I'm not going around being like, I hate Indian people. They were just that particular group. You of just Indians. hated those Indians. I didn't hate them. <laughs> I just really didn't like them. Because they kept bumping up on me. I, at one point, I had to just stand with my elbow locked. Like, if you're going to keep bumping, you're just going to get elbowed in the back. Yeah. But I would never think, like, oh, I hate Indians. I'm going to go do this to them. I just, I don't understand hatred like i don't understand what it's what it's rooted in i mean of course the ugly history of america being built on the backs of 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 enslaved people from africa is like billboard right in your face but i mean and again maybe bias i feel like like there should be a lot of black praise like white people should be like thank you for building this nation for us that's not really the way it's come out, but I can't understand people legitimately sitting in their mother's basement like, I hate this race and I want it. Like, what did we do to you? Like, we literally haven't done anything to you. You stole us. You used us. We built your country. And now you're going to go out of your way to make sure you will limit. Like, what? What? Make it like make it make sense. Make the math math. It's not mathing. Then people are mad at, you know, Mexicans, they're stealing our jobs. You weren't working those jobs. Like, and they're not, they're not really stealing your jobs. Like, I'll, like most of the Mexicans I know have amazing jobs or brilliant people. I, like, I, like, I just don't get this, like, we need to pinpoint and target people and make them bad when the people who are actually bad are the ones who are doing all the killing. I don't know if I even make sense. I don't. I just, just, I don't know what has to be instilled in someone to hate. And maybe because I don't, I'm not a hater. I don't, <laughs> I don't have hate in me. Like, you I don't a hate, like, you a, oh, you a hater. I'm not a hater. You, oh, you a hate. you definitely a hater. Just not, even, not in this sense. I don't even like when people use the word my haters and don't, like, I'm like, why are you manifesting people disliking you to the extent of hate and chances are you probably don't have haters i don't have haters no i'm saying just people out yeah people who talk about haters don't actually have haters um i hope i don't have haters if i do have haters i'm sorry that i've put you in a place where you feel you need to hate me but i've never like i've never been the one to be like my haters i hate this i I, so i just don't get it and i think this gin is kicking in because i'm like Oh yeah, Jen. Okay, yeah, That's, this yeah. makes sense yeah. because you've cut me off like three or four times. I have. Um, yeah. I'm a different. Jess Hopefully, with, I can I can get a coherent. I'm thought a out. different Jess with Jen. Um, so it just bothers me. Like I, we have three little kids, and they're like, yeah, they have their moments, but they're sweet. Like Solace loves everything and wants everything to be okay and everyone to be okay and happy. She has her moments, but like, will never go to the extent of hate. So to think that there is a whole sect. S-E-C-T of the population that's just manifesting hate and how to be superior blows me and not in the good way. Yeah. So, um, I, I too sometimes get con- confused as to why um, someone would hate a race of people simply because they're that race, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I, 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 I got caught up on, an, on a different thought um, over the last couple of days because usually when, when a mass shooting of this magnitude happens, right, we you kind of know what's coming, right? It's, you know, there's a debate on gun control, right? Thoughts should, and should, prayers. Should thoughts and prayers, right, of course. And then it's, you know, 
we need to ban assault rifles. And then it's de- then people are saying, oh, well, what's an assault rifle? You don't even know what an assault rifle is. You don't understand guns. And it's like, well, I know I don't understand guns, but if people are able to empty, you know, fire a certain number of bullets in a certain amount of time, like, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be in the hands of a consumer. Mm-hmm. Um and then, you know, it's always oh, an assault on the Second Amendment. And no, it's not. It was, we should be protecting people like we've lost kids. We've lost people in movie theaters. We've lost people in nightclubs. We've lost people in open concerts. We've had police fired upon in Dallas. Like we've had so many of these things happen. And every single time, if you pay attention, you can probably call out exactly how the conversation is going to unfold until it just stops because it always just stops and people just go back to doing you know doing whatever they were doing before the 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 shooting happened and i'm i'm caught between two beliefs because i've grown up to this point i'm 30 i'm 34 going on 35 and never had guns in the house growing up father was was very adamant about not having guns in the house um wasn't even allowed to play with guns like not water guns not guns with my little gi joes like nothing and to this point i haven't needed one and i I thank god that i haven't um so i i've i've lived a life where i didn't need to have a gun right honestly period of my life i didn't know what a gun was Mm -hmm. didn't know they were a thing because i had absolutely no exposure to them uh, but I realize that's not everyone's reality, right? And I and I understand that. And some people do need guns to protect themselves, and protect their families just because of where they live. But you always hear this, this argument that uh, the only solution for a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, right? Like if someone, the only reason people pick grocery stores and, and schools and movie theaters is because guns aren't allowed on those properties, right? They're gun, they're gun free zones. So that if someone were to come in and shoot more than likely, they're not going to meet any, any sort of retaliation because one has a gun and the the people who abide by the rules aren't able to defend themselves. So we should relax those laws and those rules and let everybody carry guns. Remember there's a big thing a couple years ago. Oh, we should arm teachers, right? You remember that? So. Cause teachers ain't doing enough. So it's like, I want to, a part of me is like black people in this country should have guns to defend themselves because absolutely that's, that's one belief I have, right? Because I want to believe that uh, a well-intentioned person with a gun can defend themselves against a home invasion or someone trying to shoot up a grocery store. But then I think about how many people are actually prepared to be in like a live gunfight environment, like a gunfire environment. I know I'm not, I tell you right now, I take all the classes necessary to get a permit and let me wind up in a crossfire. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, you're not going to want me on your team is, is what I'm saying. Yo, Cause give I'm me a concealed probably, pew, pew. probably not going to be an asset. So I it's like, you. do more people become endangered because you've got, bullets whizzing Mm -hmm. and flying everywhere. And then I think about how many of these people who have committed these heinous acts been good guys with a gun at one point in time, right? Like at what point does someone become, go from being a good guy with a gun to a bad guy with a gun? And if that happens, right? If someone, I would assume a good guy with a gun is someone who buys the gun legally right doesn't doesn't smuggle it doesn't um does it cross borders and buy it and and make i would just make illegal alterations i'm I'm saying like well then what what is a good what constitutes a good guy with a gun because let me let me finish so what i'm saying is is like in my mind let's say that is the definition right like a good guy with a gun is someone who buys a gun legally and you know only uses it to to shoot to shoot wildlife or shooting their backyard with things that they're legally allowed to do. But then that person for some reason just just goes wild and they shoot. Cause I believe this kid 
in uh, in Buffalo bought his gun legally. Dude ran ran mm -hmm. a background check. Nothing came up. Sold him the gun because there were no red flags in the eyes of the person who sold him the gun. He had no reason to suspect that he wasn't a good person, right? So he sold him the gun. And then this person turns around and he kills 10 people and injures 13 and injures three more. Like, it's just, I, I don't, I don't know what at this point, I don't know what the answer is. I don't think anybody knows, which is why we haven't made any progress on this issue. But one thing I've been thinking about is like, what's to stop if there's, we got so many guns out of here, we got, I think like more guns than people at this point mm -hmm. in this country, like that many guns, like it's just hard like these things will continue to happen with that many guns out there in the wild. And I don't know how you regulate it. I don't know if you can regulate it. And obviously because of the second amendment, because, because of the second amendment, it con it gives people the constitutional right to own firearms. But when you think about this pandemic that we've gone through, People losing jobs, people not being able to afford homes, crime going up, all these different things, pushing people like mental health. It's mental health month. I got my mental health is is health hoodie on. People's mental health constantly being challenged. You know, let's just say more people who were good guys with guns don't turn into the next shooter. They will. That that's legitimately how the society is set up. We're not designed to not have these situations. Like it is part, it is part of American culture to have mass shootings. There is literally, as we are having this conversation, someone is brewing the next their ne the next attack. There's no way to prevent it. We're too we're too far gone. When you, I mean, you think of countries like countries in Europe country like I think it was New Zealand where they had an attack and I, I feel like the guy was wielding a knife um and he still did a lot of damage like we as a human race are violent and I just don't think especially in America where people have access to having guns there's anything that can be done to stop it it is part of who we are we need to since what was it Timothy McVeigh in was it little rock i think that was the first shooting that i can recall yeah i want to say no no columbine was the first shooting that I, I i heard of um and i don't know if timothy was, was he you, part of columbine i feel like timothy McVeigh was oklahoma city bombing <sighs> see see we got bombings and we got shootings see there's just yeah it's it's ingrained in our society but columbine i was a kid when columbine happened and i to this day, still remember Columbine. Don't know the names. And then Timothy McVeigh. I remember Timothy McVeigh. I don't know what he did, but I remember him. I was a small child, but I remember it. He bombed the building. He bombed in, the building. In Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma City. <laughs> and then you've got Columbine. So it's yeah. like, this is something that is part of our culture. I will say the one thing that I do applaud, I feel like the media is handling it better. Because I don't know what the shooter looked like for what happened in Buffalo. And in, I feel like past shoot, and maybe it's it's me. Maybe I haven't gone out of my way to see this, but I feel like in past shootings, I saw the shooter more than I saw the victims. I know the victims; I've seen their faces. I have not seen the shooter's face, and that's something that I can appreciate. He's white. I know he's white. I in my head, I know what he looks like. He's probably just like heavy set white guy. He's not heavy set. But he's not. No, nah, he seems eighteen. They're heavy set eighteen year olds. You're right. There are a lot of them because we're you know beast country. But, but that's yeah, we are. Neither here nor and there. And maybe his maybe health could have been an issue. Like nutrition could have been an issue. There are so many things that could break this down. Um, but I don't know what he looks like. I'm glad I don't know what he looks like because in the past when we do have these things. They show us this person over and over and over again. And when they're white, they will show us a good person picture of this person. Like <laughs> at soccer with his trophy. Like, oh, you're, you're you know the, uh, the the post on Twitter where it's like, <laughs> this is really, I don't know why, it's because I need comic relief. Whereas like uh, anytime a white dude 
does something heinous they always show him like in a really nice picture they so do. it shows a picture of this this white dude <laughs> with his family jet skiing it was like he murdered his wife and they always do that <laughs> three kids and they shit together he's got his hands on the jet ski and he looks he's like, like really he's really like into it like a sandals commercial yeah. they do that on purpose yeah. and they villainize when a black person does something wrong they get like the worst yeah, mug shot sh- mug yes, shots coming worst shot of them so you yeah. know i have this image of who this guy is I'm glad I haven't actually seen him. I don't want to see him. He he deserves no space in my mind. I don't know his name. I don't know what he looks like. And that's great. His name's Preston. Don't, I don't, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. So he's a Preston. So now he just contaminated that name for like the mm. next year. So until now, I didn't know his name. Yeah. I don't know his mama. I don't know his dad. Like, I don't know all of the things behind. Now they're going to paint the... I know what they usually do. They're going to paint the picture. Like, these are all the things he went through. You know, his teddy bear was taken from him in the fourth grade by a black kid. And that's why... Like, that's what started. Like, they, they will find a reason to put the blame on the victims. And that's what frustrates me. But I will say, up until this point, and maybe it's my own ignorance, I haven't gone out of my way to expose myself to it. I haven't been exposed to him. And that's how it should be. You know, you know what I think about? What kind of punk bitch you got to be to just go in to a grocery store and shoot defen- defenseless elderly people. Yeah. And you think you're accomplishing something. You think you're standing up to, to defend against this replacement theory that's that's floating around out there. You think you're protecting you know whiteness it's just like nah you just a bitch yeah. <laughs> like there are you, plenty of other places you could have tried that and you, and you roll in you know with your little army fatigue and your little 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 uh modified guns and you, you stroll in and you kill grandmothers and aunts and retired police officers who just want to protect their community so they do a part-time gig as security at a, at a grocery store and you take those people mm-hmm. from this earth and their families and, and you think game? and you think you've you've done something and you really haven't like you just I, just I still don't really understand this replacement theory and if it is a thing i don't and maybe because well, i'm black i don't want to I don't, I don't understand the fear of losing your race. Like, I just, where do you, where do they think they're going to go? Like, are we going to, are minorities going to, st- like, do we have our secret meetings and we're like, we're going to start taking white people out? I mean, if you think about the professions and stuff, and honestly, real talk, like, on some wild stuff, wild conspiracy stuff that doesn't exist yet like if we as minorities had meetings like we work as certified nurses like we like we could legit be like hey i'm working with mr donaldson i you know i go into his house every day i shoot him up with something like we could we could we could take out generations if we wanted to we don't do that i just i don't understand this fear of a place because if all of the other races really like united and were like we were going to take out one race we could we're not like what is the fear of replacement I don't I don't get where it stems from and maybe I need to start going to some clan meetings or like streaming some stuff to get more understanding of it but I don't understand being fearful that your race is going to be replaced that's because you've never been part of the majority before I am the majority you are now but you haven't been a part of the majority and then and then been at risk of losing it for the first time since the country's been established. What's the worst that can happen to you? Like you guys already established the country to be in. First your of favor. all, don't say don't say you guys. Like I'm I'm white. I'm not. I'm, I'm just white in you. color as you. Like you got, I'm. You got some white in you. I'm darker than you. I'm, st- I'm trying to make a dollar at fifteen cent like everybody okay, else. Okay, it's gonna okay. be easier for you to make that dollar. So, than me. Uh, nah. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff, I and mean, we can get into it on the next episode. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just. It's unfortunate. It's not necessary. These people walk around with these these big guns and they and they shoot people who can't defend themselves and they just think that they're like doing something. It's, it's like, not that nah, they shoot yeah. people who can't defend themselves. They shoot people who shouldn't have to defend themselves. Well, whether they should or shouldn't, they, they can't at that point. And you roll up on somebody, they're just doing the usual at a grocery store, and you put you know two in them. 
They don't, they don't have a chance to defend themselves. They don't have a chance mm-hmm. to run, let alone defend themselves. It, it makes me not want to take my kids out. So, look, I'm I'm leaned in. I'm all in on the on the contactless economy. Instacart, DoorDash. Even though they up the prices on like basic goods. Who did? Instacart. Oh, they did. I mean, they do it by default, but like if you look at well, I mean, I'll if, look if at prices ad, are, if prices are going up in the stores, then that would make no, sense. No, I'm saying I'll look at an ad and see how much the price is of something, and then I'll look on Instacart when I'm ordering, and I'm like, y'all really gonna charge me uh, this much more? Yeah, it was like Uber Eats was gonna charge me sixteen dollars for your coffee. to deliver coffee because they didn't have a driver in the area. I'm like, whose problem is that? You gonna you gonna pass you gonna problem. be that bold passing the price onto the con- like you gonna be out in the open passing the prices onto your consumer? White supremacy right there. No, it's not white supremacy. It is. No, it's just capitalism. Yeah, um, white supremacy. So yeah, uh, the Buffalo thing is is tough. Um, it is. You know, we shouldn't, as black people, uh, we're very resilient. You know, we usually bounce back. We shouldn't have to. Far, far too often, we we find ourselves having to. You know, whether it's a George Floyd, a uh, Trayvon Martin. To, like I, I could go down the line and I, I don't really want to but you know we as a as as a race as individuals because you know we're not a monolith but I would imagine all of these uh, events affect uh, black people in this country one way or another so you know we'll um, come you know bounce back from this eventually but I, I, I do hope that you know something is done whether it's more black Americans get serious about gun ownership and that number has been coming up uh, in, in recent years. But even um, so, if if a grocery store is not a place to take a gun. Well, in some states you can you can carry. It just depends on the state. Like, I don't know what I don't know what the rules or the laws were in Buffalo, but. Like, I don't know. I'm just saying if it, it would seem that nothing's going to be done about restricting guns, um, maybe amending this like. Change like there's, there's. I don't think there's anything that's going to be done from our lawmakers. Mm-hmm. So the best thing I feel like at this point, individuals can do, is just learn how to handle and and do the best that they can to protect themselves and, and their own. So are you going to get a gun? <laughs> I, I tell you this, for the first time in my life, uh, I am strongly considering it. Okay. I really just want a shotgun so I can do the. I love that song. I didn't say it's gonna be loaded, but I want to be able to scare the living bejesus. All right, next. Out of what's next? This you wanted you wanted to talk about the honey. I did. I did. Yeah. So, um, I maybe about two years ago, as the pandemic was beginning to creep in, I got into the honey pot. Um, found out about the honey pot. It's what's company. the honey pot? Honeypot is a feminine hygiene company, black owned, black founded, feminine hygiene company. So some race, <laughs> still racist. So I guess some racist stuff had happened. And, you know, y'all can correct me if I'm mixing some of the details. But Honeypot founder was in Target. And I think like a group of white people found out she was in Target and that she was black. So they started leaving her bad reviews. So then black america black female america found out so then we started you know pouring our dollars we were like no we're not gonna let our sister fail so um got into that she started thriving like she started you you would see her on the commercials like she had this like i wouldn't say organic but a natural line of feminine hygiene product i've used her stuff she has a feminine wash she has you know lubricant um pads I've used I've used probably some part of every every item that she has in her line. So recently she sold the company and I and I'm pretty confident she was building to scale. So she this isn't something that people should have been surprised about. But either her or the company that she sold to changed the ingredients. So she went from being paraben it went from being paraben free all natural, all of this stuff to, you know, having chemicals and stuff that are not good for, especially the, the vaginal wash, which is like one of like the mainstream products. Cause there's a vaginal wash. There's a vaginal wash. I've been using it for three years, David. Wow. It's been in our shower. It's in our shower. So it's 
a wash for the vagina. Right. But you can't like wash anything else with it. It's specifically for the I vagina. Mean, you, I'm sure if you wanted to wash other things, but the vagina is a very sensitive. What's wrong with soap? So the pH balance of soap can be off. Oh. The ingredients, harsh ingredients. The vagina is a very delicate mm. yet powerful place. No argument here. And it needs to be taken <laughs> care of well and properly. Absolutely no argument for and me. And the honeypot provided us. I, I concur. Vaginal owners a safe and effective way of cleaning ourselves. Okay. So, so they change the ingredients. Change the ingredients, putting harsher chemicals, things that are not good for the vagina. Okay. Black female America got a hold of this and they got very upset. I mean, I'm talking bashing her on Instagram comments. Like she had to block bashing all Bashing the founder. Yes. Okay. Um, and it's there have been a lot of different conversations and some people you know i'm in a black women love to who love target group yes you are i i am i have made a lot of friends from that group yes, as well yes you have um and you know people are there are a lot of posts about it and you know the admins have to had to step in and be like look one post everyone comment on this thread but we're not going to keep harping on this so it got me thinking because this isn't the first black owned black founded company that eventually sold and their recipe changed or their marketing tactic this happened with shea moisture shea moisture was built on the backs of black women they hmm. sold to a larger company and they started changing their their commercials you know instead of having you know kinky curly coily hair you had you know your white girl who had like wavy hair whose hair didn't match the product and people were really upset because they were like we are the reason why you are a successful brand and now you're coming on with your commercial and they're not appealing to the people who made you who you are so reading all of this, seeing all of this, this is not Cantu did it. They're so essentially uh, Carol's daughter, which was, I don't want to say it was fully Jada Pinkett's brand, but Jada Pinkett stood behind it. We're not really going to talk about Jada. I'm not the biggest Jada person right now. Um, all of these brands. Jada didn't do nothing to you. Yes, she did. She didn't do nothing to Jada you. Jada offended me. Um, all of these brands that are for black, that are essentially FUBU. For us, by us, for those of you who don't know what FUBU stands for. They're FUBU brands. They seem to sell us out. So people were, you know, livid about, you know, the honey pot and all of this. And I'm kind of torn because I get it. She's a black woman. She built her brand. You know, she was all about the ancestors. It literally says on the back of the bottle, the ancestors gave her this recipe. Um... Clearly, the ancestors gave a new recipe to the corporate company because they changed it. Uh -huh. People are mad. People are upset. People are hurt. Feelings are being exerted. So I guess I'm kind of torn because I'm like, if you are intentionally building your business to scale because, you know, maybe you recognize as a black female entrepreneur, there's only so much power I have. There's only so far I can get with this brand. Maybe you recognize that, hey, there's only so long I want to do this before I moved on to my next product which is perfectly fine how much responsibility is on her because she no longer owns the company she sold this to someone else i don't know who she sold it to but people are attacking her people are essentially calling her a sellout she's she's you know failed the black race and all of this stuff and initially i was upset because i was like dang my vagina like this is what <laughs> Like what am I gonna what am I gonna use to wash my vagina? Like this has been good to me. We've had a good relationship. I haven't looked for I haven't I haven't searched outside of this brand for vaginal cleansing. Now my vagina's out of luck, which means I'm out of luck, which eventually means you're out of luck. Like it's a whole it's a cycle. So I was upset, but then at the same time I was like, this is corporate America. Like she built a brand that took target over was in commercials part of the like the push that target did for like featuring black brands and their commercial and stuff like that yeah. and minority brands she was part of that groundwork i applaud her for that 
I was in a um, after I had Sonoma, I was in a group, um, a therapy group, and they actually were, were able to have her and they interviewed her. So I, you know, I watched it live and all of that. So I'm proud of her. I'm like, yes, you know, black queen, sister. Do yes. It. Yes, queen. Yes. I don't condone people attacking her. I don't condone people, you know, insulting her to the point that she has to shut down her Instagram. Y'all are wild for that. Like, I don't understand why people are use social media as a weapon like that. There, People are insane. Like, you look crazy. You are crazy if you're doing all this. Like, you're sitting at home on your phone, on your computer, and you're attacking somebody like. But, you know, in my face, you would never say any of this. Neither here nor there. So I get it. I get where she's coming from. I get what she what she did. I get people's emotion and people being upset because again, even I was like, "But what about my vagina? Like, how am I gonna? What am I using to clean my vagina? Because like these mainstream soaps are not pH balanced for my vagina." But I think as black women, we are regularly made to be used. You know, the consumer dollar of the black woman is very strong and it goes very far. When black women stand behind your brand, you've got to, you're successful. Like, you know, forget all other races. I mean, not forget y'all, but like, y'all don't have the power that the black female dollar has. And so I can see the hurt when the black female dollar invests in a particular brand and that brand eventually lets you down because it's almost like they're using you, even if that person is of your race, the founders are of your race. But I think a lot of times we forget how capitalized this country is, how corporate this country is. I like how I said it. But that's Um, how you said it's incorrect. Still like it. Anyway, messing up my whole train of thought. I'm sorry. So I've been I've been going back and forth in terms of like whose side am I on? I mean, obviously, number one. I'm on the side of my vagina. Like that's like this is my teammate right here. I think I think we've hit a record for a number of times. I said one. The word, the word vagina has been used, and two references to your vagina specifically. I mean, I can't reference anybody else's vagina. And you could. Whose vagina would I? I reference? don't know. That's just invasion I don't know of. Who's, I don't know whose vaginas you've had access to. No one. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Anyway. So Stank. I'm concerned about the well, the welfare of my vagina. I'm also concerned about the welfare of your vagina too, because if you're using so the what's, honey, so what's what's ultimately? What's I guess the issue? I can't I can't decide whose side I'm on. So she did come out. She did a big release. She did a face an Instagram post, and then she blocked all comments. You can't comment on our post right. anymore. Um, her feelings were hurt. Like you know. People attacked her because people are mean because the human race is mean. Um, And I was kind of like, well, you. You did sell your company and they like by default, people affiliate the company to you. So even if you sold it to another corporation, you are the face that people know, especially the people who have been loyal to you. So I understand the hurt of the consumer who's helped build this brand. Granted, they didn't put in the legwork. They put in the dollars to build this brand for you to be the success you are, mm, for you to sell no, it. It's not for nothing. It's not. Like, people assume, like, you have to be in the office doing the work. No, me as a consumer, I helped you build this brand. I Over the past three years, I've bought at least five bottles. At least five bottles. And this stuff's not cheap. It's not expensive, but it's not cheap. My vaginal health is worth it. I'll be the... I'll be the... <laughs> Yeah, I'll be the one to decide that. So once we get off the air, I need receipts. No, you don't. Yes, I do. And trust me, my vaginal health has been high. Anyway, so I get it. But I also get, you know, when you're in a corporation, when you get the opportunity to sell, you sell. Like if someone was like, hey, I want to buy Rush Vibes for $1.5 million. I was like, okay. No, it's too low. You got one more? <laughs> do you have $1.5 million? No. So, so if someone wants to buy this for 1.5, that's too low for you? Yeah. Anyway. So you thought I was joking. I'm dead ass serious. I know you're dead ass, which is, <laughs> which is concerning to me. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess my point is, in a whole, it's difficult to... 
Got a vacuum? Vacuum? You said in a hole. As a hole. Oh, as a hole. Okay. Sorry. Um, it's difficult to pick a side because I get the corporate side of it. You've built your brand. You need to sell. You need to make your money. There's only so much you can do. Someone right. else can do more with it. But I also get the as a consumer, I helped you build your brand and you've hurt my feelings because you are no like you've sold and you didn't sell in a way of which the integrity of the brand would be held. So what do you want me? Do you want me to help you? I need you to find me another brand. Yeah, I, 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 I need you I'm to not going to find you another vaginal wash. I need a good vaginal wash. That's um, black owned. So thoughts, thoughts on this, because believe it or not, coincidentally, this happened to, to cross my, my radar. Oh, that uh, on, happened to a male. Brand. No, on, on Twitter. Uh, I, I saw that Honey Pot was trending the other day, probably the same day that she made her video mm -hmm. on Instagram. So I, I went to Instagram and, and looked at it briefly. One, because I didn't have any exposure to the brand. You do. It's been in your shower for the past three years. Uh, I don't haven't knowingly had any exposure to the brand. Obviously, I don't buy it. No. So I was like, oh, but I assumed it was a it was a black female uh, founder, and uh, had something. It had happened. There was a shift within our company. So I saw ingredients were mentioned. Um, the fact that I think she's still involved with the company, even though she has, I guess, sold it. Um, look, the object of the purpose of a business is to make money. Mm hmm. Um, if you have shareholders, it's to increase shareholder value of the company for the shareholders. Um, if you if you don't and it's a startup and you have determined that you want to get it to a certain point and you want to exit. Then, you know, once you set once you've sold it, you've sold a certain amount of stake and control and other people are making decisions or you have to make decisions um, uh, as a contingent with other people. And someone is going is like no two people are going to run a company the same way. You and I, if I said yes, all right, I want you to do all the setup for Rush Vibes. I want you to build out the studio. You set the cameras up. I'm just going to sit here and be the uh, be the talent. This thing would look completely different. It yeah. would run. It would run differently. Yeah. Maybe maybe not completely, but it would run differently mm -hmm. because we're two different people. You're creativity is different than my creativity mm -hmm. uh so you know i i can appreciate a fan or a consumer you know getting in the ground level with the company supporting them helping them as being you know, being a repeat recurring um customer helping them build their brand to a certain point where they can afford can be valuable enough to to be uh, acquired uh, i can understand people feeling betrayed if the whole reason they were supporting it was because of certain products but we got it we got to get we have to get out of this mindset that we don't live in a capitalist society because we do mm -hmm. and that's just that's just it like biz businesses are going to scale businesses are going to become attractive businesses are going to be acquired and then businesses are going to adjust according to the bigger business that acquired them and according to what the new leadership and the new head of sales or marketing or whatever, how they want to drive the company. And that's just, that's just the way it is. But I think it's deeper than that. I think it's more, it did, but, I don't, I, but I'm not I'm one. I, I wasn't, but I wasn't done yet. So, and I, and I don't think it needs to be, you had an extended pause. Uh, that's called a breath. And I don't, it can be deeper than that, but I don't think it's, I think it is. It's, it's not necessary. I think from the consumer part, and I think it's just a traumatic deep. And I'm I, I'm really over like the over usage of the word traumatic, but I think I have to use the word traumatic for this. Um, I think black women are notorious for building things, even if it's adjacent. Like they didn't physically actually like come up with the recipe and build the brand. They recognize, like, I know part of why I started supporting the Honey Pot was because I saw the articles about, you know, 
a sister of mine was in trouble. She came up with this brand and an, another group of people were going out of their way to make sure she failed. They were posting negative reviews and I didn't want that for my sister, a fellow black woman. So I said, I'm going to invest. I mean, I don't know what at the time I didn't know what this product was. Feminine wash. I'm going to buy it. I bought it. I liked it. Like my vagina liked it. We liked it as a collective. So I kept supporting her. I bought other things. Um, so I think the, the hurt comes from like when you were in a moment of need, we banded together and we had your back to get you to the point where your business is scalable, where other large corporations want to buy it. And I don't know the details of what goes into a sale. I don't know if you have the ability to say, hey, I'm selling you my company, but the expectation is that you carry the same integrity of products because this is what my client base has grown accustomed to. Or if it's just like we now own the we have the rights, we have the name, we can do what we want with it. I don't know what that is. I don't know the parameters of that. Can I I ask you a question? Did I ask a question? No, but I have one, so I want to know if I can ask it. Oh, you want to? I thought you wanted to answer my question. No, I, I want to ask a question. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were selling your house, mm-hmm. if I were selling you my house, this is my house, and you want to buy it, right? And I said, okay, you can buy my house. How would you feel if I said you can have like you're going to give me X amount of dollars for this house, but I really don't want you to rip the carpet out and put hardwood in. Oh, and those curtains over the sliding door. I I just, my mom made them and they're gray. I really just think like you should keep them there and you know, don't do too much. Like I turned the back bedroom into an office. It's supposed to be a bedroom. If you just keep it as an office, because that's just what I was accustomed to. Like, could you just, could you just do it? Because that's the way it's always been. Would you say yes? How much of a deal are you giving me <laughs> on this house? Uh, like, if you're selling it, like, so that's to answer your question. And I don't mean to be condescending, but like, that doesn't even make sense. If you're going to sell the company to somebody, you're selling it, mm-hmm. and then that's no disrespect to the connection between founder and consumer because those those are real things. That's yeah, a real thing that yeah. doesn't always happen, but it can happen. And when it does happen, it's dynamic. Look at Elon Musk and, and the people who support him uh, with with Tesla and his cars, but nah, more than likely that's that's not happening. And you know, yes, I don't know if 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 I would describe it as when she was in need. I think it's an exchange, right? She built a product that appeals to a certain demographic of consumers, people who look for all natural products or definitely don't want to use harmful products, especially when it comes to their vagina. And that made that product available and people bought it. Now, when assuming that this, <laughs> this pack of white women, this is, this is legit. A pack of white women decided to, to down rate her stuff and black women rallied around you know, I mean, that might be a legitimate gripe. I mean, was she out on the inter- internet saying, black women, please support my business? Or did she just continue to sell the product that people wanted to buy and do some targeted marketing? Which, because you know, we all have target consumers in mind. Mm-hmm. So we try to adjust our advertisements to appeal to those, to that demo. Maybe she just did that. So I don't know if it's, Anything you do willingly, you can't necessarily hold against somebody, somebody else, because you you made the decision to do it. To your point, I agree. But I will say that the black female entrepreneur takes advantage of the black female consumer to an extent. Takes advantage? Because they know we... The thing with being black is you have an oblig an, a defaulted obligation to support black. Do you? You do. A defaulted obligation yes. to support black. Yes. Think about when you watch like Family Feud and there's a black family 
and there's a white family. What family do you default support? The one that's going to win. No, the black family, <laughs> because it's your obligation as a black person to support black people. If there are no uh, black people available, you go to the mm. next melanated race, Hispanics. If there are no Hispanics, the next melanated race, Native Americans. If there are no Native Americans, the next melanated yeah, race, I, I, sometimes I do Asian. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So it's 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 an obligation that has been put on us. I need to take care of mine. It's it's almost like the fight or flight of race when it comes to this person is closest to me in race, I need to protect them. And I think that's why feelings are hurt because we saw someone, we saw someone of our race, our sister was in need and we, we, we went to her, we went to save her. We like, we're not going to see you fail. You've gotten this far. We're going to make sure you go the rest of the way. And we've been loyal to her. We've supported her again. I'm in the black women in target group. I like I've seen the post. I've seen how black women have rallied around her and supported her. So I understand them being frustrated and, and upset. And I'm frustrated and, and upset because I'm like, what am I going to wash my vagina with now? Like I have to go back to bar soap. This I'm, I'm bougier than that. So that's frustrating. But I think that is something that needs to be acknowledged that there's something culturally within the black community where we feel obligated to support our own because of the history of what we the marginalized history that we've dealt with that ultimately leads to store shootings and all of this stuff where it's like we need to protect and save our own and when one of us gets the opportunity to get out for however way in whatever means it's almost a betrayal to us because we pushed you up and once you got up you, you i mean i i just i'm sorry but i don't understand i don't i get the frustration but i don't understand how you can be upset with someone for building a company and selling it so that they can create maybe generational wealth for them and theirs. I mean, I'm not upset. I mean, the only thing I'm upset if, about if is any, I don't know what to wash my vagina with. Well, I mean, that's that's a personal problem. That's not her problem anymore. It's supposed to be your problem, too. Well, then it'd be, it's yours and mine problem, but it's not hers. <laughs> like, it's up to the people who are making decisions now. Like, she, she can't do but so much. I feel like she should have at least. And I don't know the details. That's not fair for you to say. It's not, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's, like, it's, at least sell she's the, the one, integrity of the company. Look, man. Like these are the ingredients I used. Use these ingredients too. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Like this is business. This is capitalism, and all the money matters is the bottom line. Like, if it was a nonprofit, I get. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. I get it. But I so, also get people being upset. Yeah, people are gonna be. I mean, people are upset about anything. I'm about to like come you up could with go. A you could wash. go on Twitter and be like, "Yo, I lost fifteen pounds." And then somebody would respond, oh, you saying there's a problem with being overweight? <laughs> like, people are going to be upset. Yeah. People are going to be upset about anything and everything. That's just the nature of people. Um, but and far be it for me to just be upset at somebody for, for building something and then selling it and for a price that they felt was it was worth and taking care of themselves because, you know, that's for someone who's a founder and wants to build a, a business other than it becoming the next Apple or Walmart or whatever. Um, I would imagine getting to the point where you are, are attractive to be acquired by a bigger company, a mm -hmm. bigger brand, especially in the health and wellness space. Um, I can't imagine anything better. Right. And so that's a win for her. Um, unfortunately y'all just got to get your, your vag wash somewhere else. You got I mean, so I'm sure there will be another price. Mm -hmm. if, if the success of, of this was legit, I'm sure there will be another one on the market at some point. If there's not one already, maybe it's just not as well known. Mm -hmm. So y'all can go build somebody else up. And maybe they won't sell. Maybe they'll just they'll just keep it how it's been. But um definitely need to people need to cool out on the online bullying because that's not that's Oh, not it's cool. it's toxic. The degrees of which people attack. Yeah. Like, just pause and think. Would you say this to this person in in their face? 
He won't. Same man. It's just like that. Just like that. That shooter. Punk bitch. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. That's just how I feel. Um, anyway. Yeah. What's next? I feel like we've had some heavy topics. We have, but it's like we're at an hour and a half. So Are we? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, now it's an hour and a half. So I think that's a good spot to stop. Maybe we can do like an... I don't know. You know, I like Bill Maher. Sometimes it says overtime, like the nine, like nine to 15 minutes. The uh, continuing discussion. Ooh. Maybe we can do something and then we'll drop it later on. Uh, next week I think this will be a Wednesday release This is Friday I imagine I'll have an opportunity to get this Edited And uh, and, and, and ready to, to drop back on our Normal day of the week which is Wednesday uh, I've had a couple of consecutive Friday drops uh, Not sure how I feel about it I like Wednesday um, But Friday just happens to have been The soonest I could get Get them out due to uh, some technical limitations. My 2017 MacBook is not capable of handling f- not the three uh, m- uh, multi multi cam recording. Which y'all, y'all don't care about that. That's nerd stuff or whatever. But uh, somebody cares about it. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Um, you know what to do by now. YouTube, subscribe, turn the notifications on, uh, leave us a review from on Apple, Spotify, Google. Um, you know, we're, we're on social media, Facebook, Instagram, comment, follow, uh, interact with us, engage with us. We're going to be dropping some, uh, new type of content. We'll be doing some reels. Um, and then also, uh, just doing some, some different things on social media just to try to build some engagement. So, um, if you haven't been engaging with this yet, you're just a listener, you know, change it up a little bit. So, um, Anything else? No. Cool. Well. Oh, wait. I lied. If you do know of any all natural vaginal washes. I'd be so happy not to hear the word vagina or vaginal wash ever. You don't want to hear the word vagina no more? Nah, I call it something else. (laughs) David. I just, I'll have to. I'll just use another word. Wow. I mean, there's several words out there. You don't have to. I'm, you know, I'm probably not. You're probably thinking of a word that I'm not thinking of. Just doesn't matter. It's so vulgar. Anyway, I didn't say anything. If you know of any, I just said I any good word. washes, uh, please share it in the comments or DM me or text me. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. All right. So that's this week's episode. Uh, 90 minutes long. It's definitely some heavy stuff, but uh, hopefully next week we can get to some more lighter topics. Also, we're going to be working on getting our first guest of the season in here pretty soon. We have to work out how we're going to do it Studio with the uh, with the room. But I think um, I think it's time to make it happen because I've been waiting to get this guest in here for for a minute. And hopefully she's she's available. She's she a, she's available soon. So uh Vibe Tribe, we appreciate you guys. We love you. Um have a good weekend. Although you'll see this Wednesday. It's Friday, so be safe. It's hot out here in Charlotte. Hot in these streets. Hot hot and humid. So have your umbrella if you're big. Have that towel to put over your shoulder so you can can get the sweat. I know how your big wash fella. your vaginas. I know how your big fellas do, and definitely wash your vaginas because you can't like, walk around with that thing. That thing being musty. Excuse me. Dudes too. <laughs> I mean, everybody wash wash yourselves, but that would be yeah. a good business. Male wash. Sun, sundress season. You can't be having that. That kitty can't be stinking. It is, David. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, um, we're out of here. I, I, I feel like I'm the one that's been drinking gin now. I'm saying <laughs> some out of character stuff. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you next week. Peace. None but some girl pains. None but some girl pains. Yeah. Hey, hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. Stop me now.